Welcome to Third Eye Vision, where we motivate the blind, stimulate your mind, and welcome all kinds. Man, when I got this video, I had to get up out my bed. Probably still got cold in my eyes. And put this thing together because I love videos like this. I'm very excited to uh, put it together and promote it on this channel. Thanks, Jessica. Intersectionality between race and disability. Now, the definition of intersectionality is the oppression and discrimination resulting from the overlap of an individual barrier social identities. Now, Jessica is going to give you part one because next Thursday I'm going to air part two of the video and we're going to go live with it. Part one of her struggle. She is a woman of color. She's Guyanese and she is totally blind. Now, check out her interpretation of what it's like for Jessica to exist in today's society. I'm going to drop the link in the description so you can get the full interview if you want to, but make sure to subscribe to the channel here, Third Eye Visions, and make sure to hit the notification bell. Got to hurry up. Make sure to like, dislike if you don't like it. I'm, I'm cool with that. Comment and share this video in that order. So I ain't going to say no more. I'm going to get you to the video. Thanks again, Jessica, for providing this video so it can be spread amongst everyone to know exactly how you feel. And it's very heartfelt. So check out part one. Thank you, Jessica, again. That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? talk about the intersectionalities I face in terms of disability and race because for me it's been something with everything that's been going on right now it has been something that I just keep going back to and just with George, George Floyd and just everything in the world right now I just I think I need to talk about it and it's 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 been hard you know um, my friend Gab did something like this a few days ago and it, I just wanted to pay homage a little bit because for me it's it's weird because I want to talk about it but I don't know if I have grounds to because I'm not black I'm brown which is it's not black but it's not white so it's like what side of this do I stand on but then it's like I feel like in society you're either on one end of the spectrum or, or the other. You're either a, color, a POC or you're white. So it's, it's weird because I want to say it, but I also don't know if I have grounds to. It's Anyway, but for me, race has always been a, a thing I've had to think about. It's always been something that that I've had to grapple with in the sense that I don't look like a lot of people and even just figuring out like, where do I, where do I fit in? Because I'm Guyanese which is in South America. For me, it's been something I've, I've always had to think about, but it's weird because I'm, I'm Caribbean, I, I, but it's like, uh, that's still, like, that's not African. So it's like, how do I, you know, what, what grounds do I have? But it's always been there, you know? It's been there in the sense that, like, I don't look like everyone else and I don't, you know, these stereotypes that get placed upon people really really hurt and I and especially as someone that isn't isn't white and that's disabled because so much of you know my identity is those two things and is kind of related to that and I just constantly feel like I have to put on this mask of like okay how how do I act you know do I act like someone that's not white or, or do I be myself and myself like I don't think of myself as doing things that are particularly POC that, that you know that like you think of a brown person and you think of things like that you know it's really hard when I'm with a lot of blind people I was on a group call like a few days ago and like we were talking and somebody was like oh yeah Jessica's POC and they're all like you're what now because I don't sound like 
what someone who is brown sounds like. And, and then that, that brings up a whole thing, like what is someone who is brown or someone who is a POC supposed to sound like? Is there a specific tone? Is there a specific diction? Are there specific words we use? Because I don't use those. I don't speak slang. I don't talk like I'm from the ghetto. And, and then it just brings up this whole thing, like, okay, are we supposed to act a certain way? Because what, you know, people can meet me, blind people have met me and have assumed that I'm tall, that I have blonde hair, blue eyes, that I'm from California, and it's, it's upsetting to think that you have to sound a certain way, to act a certain way, to justify your race when people can't see what you are, right? Because for me, I'm none of those things. I'm, I guess, Mm, tan colored skin. It's not very, very dark, but it's not light either. I'm not tall, I'm not short. I have really short, dark hair, brown eyes, but I'm not white. But I sound like I am. The way I speak and the mannerisms I speak and make it sound like I'm white. And that's always been something I've had to grapple with. You know, my parents aren't from here. They're Guyanese and they still have very thick accents. And when it came down to it and when I was growing up, I think I tried to emulate the opposite of that. And I don't know if I've done it too well, but there are times I'm like, wow, do I sound too white, you know? And then there's a whole nother aspect where I go to a very predominantly white school and I feel like so often I'll be in class and I'll sit down and then they'll call on me or I'll raise my hand. And I think that there's like a moment in people's heads where it's like, oh, wow. She looks like that, but she sounds like that. What is that? You know, like in their heads, they're like, oh my goodness. And I feel like for me, validation of that is so hard because it's like, am I supposed to sound black? Am I supposed to sound brown? Do I have to have a specific cadence when I speak? And I don't think I do, but then it's like you get people's reactions and you're like, okay, maybe, maybe there is something, maybe it's not okay. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm too whitewashed, you know? And it's hard for me to justify because I'm like, I think I'm pretty intelligent. I think I'm pretty smart, but there's always this thing whenever I speak, I think that there's a moment in people's heads where it's like, okay, wow, she's actually really intelligent. And that hurts because I am, but so much of what society imposes on us as brown people is that we have to be a certain way. We have to be loud. We have to be obnoxious. We have to have this tone and, and be judgy. And I'm not, I don't and I never have, you know? And for me, race is such a, a difficult thing. And then compounded with disability, you know, making friends for me was always like, okay, like, are they gonna like me because I look like me, because I need help? Because you can look at me and you can tell that I'm disabled. My eyes are very clouded over. One of them is definitely more, like doesn't have as much of a color as the other. And there are times like, I just think like, where do I fit in as someone that goes to this institution and looks so different? And it's something I've had to really grapple with, just accepting myself as someone that it's not, it's not going to be like everyone else. And it, that's not going to 